It's an illustrator. So below the pen tool is the type tool, and below that you see a rectangle. If you click and hold on the rectangle, you will see that you can have, you have a couple of options. Now, uh, if you want to have that little menu as a tear-off, you can pull your mouse out to the edge, and if that little bar on the end when that's uh, darker, or I don't know if it's lighter when you have a lighter one, a lighter screen, but that will serve, that will tear off that little menu. Or you can just look at the nested one as its personal preference. Rectangle is pretty easy, right? So we have uh, length times width, and if you click and release, a uh, um, dialog box will come up, and you can choose the length and width that you want for your rectangle. So three inches by six inches. I'm going to switch that around so that it only has a stroke, not a fill, that little arrow thing. And I'm going to press V and pull this guy up a little bit. Remember, if you want to resize something that you make, but you want it to stay the same proportions, you hold shift. You can also click and drag a rectangle. If you want a square, you hold shift as you're dragging. So pull out, let's say, three rectangles. And I'm going to take three breaths, and then I'll start again. If you use your selector tool, v, if you press V, you'll notice that there's the anchors on each edge of the... Um, of the rectangle and so that's how we can resize it and if you pull out to the corner a little bit off of the rectangle you'll see there's this little turny arrow and this is how we can uh, turn or rotate our shapes. Um, I think Tyler noticed this last week but if you hold shift while you're rotating it will keep it rotating at you know 90 and 45 degree angles so if you want it like specifically at, at certain angles um, that's how you would do that. When you have a when you only have a stroke and no fill, you cannot click in the rectangle and move it because there's nothing here. So you have to actually click on the edge, the path, or you can grab it by that little middle circle. You'll also notice that there are little circles within circles on the edges. This is how we round our rectangle. So if you click on one of those and pull it in, you'll notice that the corners are getting rounder. Oh, beautiful. If you double click on one and pull it in, you can just round one rectangle. So if you want to start getting one, sorry, one corner. If you want to start getting, making a little bit more interesting shapes with already existing shapes, you can do that. So if I were to double click on this one, I could get sort of a little leaf shape or like a football shape. Ooh, interesting. So there is rectangles. If you click and hold, the next tool is the rounded rectangle tool. I never use that because if I want a rounded rectangle, I would just make a rectangle and then round the edges. Ellipse tool is oval or circle, so if you click and drag, you can make ovals. You can also click and release, and that, uh, that dialog box will pop up if you have a specific width and height that you need. So, say, two inches and seven inches. Boop. Oh, that looks sort of cool. And to make a circle... Just like making a square, hold shift. So everyone make, you know, at least one circle and at least one oval. And remember, I never want you to delete stuff. If you need more room, just make more artboards. Our next uh, option is the polygon tool. 
So something a little interesting about the polygon tool, if you click and um, if you click and release, you can see the radius is how far, how wide it is. Um, or no, that's the diameter. Radius is how far from one side into the middle. You can choose your amount of sides there. So of course, as we get more sides, we get closer and closer to something that looks like a circle. But it's not a circle because it has flat edges. You can also click and drag, and as you're clicking and dragging, if you press the down key, you get fewer sides. If you press the up key, you get more sides. So that's sort of a quick way to do that. So these geometric shapes are sort of increasing in complexity as we, as we move down the, the options. <laughs> All right, the last one here, I'm never I never use flare tool. If you guys want to mess around with it, you can try, but I think it's just like I feel like it's just smoke and mirrors. It's an annoying trick and it takes a lot of memory, so I never use it. The star tool. Now, star tool isn't technically a geometric shape, it's technically an abstract shape, but just since we're in this shape menu, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, the same thing, if you click and, and release, you have uh, the star is the most complicated of these shapes because we have two radiuses. So we have the radius of the middle part of the star and the radius of the outer part of the star. And the closer those are together, the stubbier the legs are going to be, or the, the points. And the further apart they are, the further apart the points are going to be. So again, you can change your points in that way and say, I want radius 1 to be 1 inch and radius 2 to be 5 inches. This means we're going to have 12 points and it's going to be a really skinny, spindly star. Whee! I might need to make more artboards. I'm going to resize this. I'm holding shift. Once everyone has a star, I want you to give me at least one star. I want you to give me the thumbs up or the good or whatever. <laughs> 